there, I'm Marcia Egan. Welcome. I can't tell you what an interesting month it has been. I guess it was over a month ago that I sent out a one question survey to all of my peeps, whether it was email lists, friends, family, you name it. The question was, what is your one most important question about how to be more productive with your email? You would have thought that the gates had just opened. There were so many responses to this. And as a result, I'm going to be producing three, I guess maybe 10 to 15 minute videos. And this is the first one. And there are going to be two more coming out probably four or five days apart. So please watch your email. And I'm going to try and answer some of those questions. I am not going to try to sell you anything in this video other than how to be better with your email and your inbox productivity. And this is something that is becoming more and more and more and more challenging for everyone. I am a life coach. I'm an executive coach. And just about everyone I deal with has issues with life balance or I can't get it done. I don't know. I am so overwhelmed. How am I going to accomplish my goals for my life? All that kind of stuff. And one of the answers is how you manage your email. It sounds are getting, I don't know how many emails you get, but the average person is getting between 80 and 200 emails a day. And that is a lot. Could you imagine what your post office box would be like if you, an average person, got 200 letters a day? It would be a lot to manage. It really, and so I feel for you. I feel for me. I have the same issues. If it's true that it takes an average person an average of four minutes to recover from an interruption, Let's just think about this for a second. If you reduce the number of interruptions that you have by only 15 in a day, 15 in a day, 15 times four is 60 minutes, which equals an hour. So you can reclaim one hour by having just 15 fewer interruptions. Do I have your attention now? <laughs> because this is part of the strategy of managing your email. We Tip number one, turn off the dings and the flashes. Turn them off. You don't need a visual interruption and you don't need an audible interruption. So you can go into whatever email client you have. Most of us have Outlook but there are settings where you can just turn it off. I say, turn the dang thing off. <laughs> You're gonna be amazed. And actually, you probably already have the habit of looking up right when you're taking little breaks in whatever you're doing, looking up to see what newfound treasure has just graced your inbox. That is not useful. It's not productive. It draws you off. So, turn the dings, turn the flashes off. Now, here's a novel thought. And that is, if you're working on something important, minimize your email, minimize your inbox, or even close it down. Oh my God, that could be heresy. <laughs> and in the next two videos, we're going to be talking a little bit more about strategies as to how and why you can make that actually work. But getting back to this subject of minimizing your interruptions, if you're doing work, do the work. Don't wait for the, ne the next email message to come through because 99 chances out of 100, it's not going to be as important as what you're working on. I know you're saying, you're saying, oh my gosh, but what if my boss emails me? I'm not saying don't check your email. I'm saying check it every now and then. And if you have a lot of fortitude, you might check it once a day. I don't think any of us can do that. But Tim Ferriss, who's the author of the 4-Hour Workweek, he checks his twice a day. 
What we recommend, what I do, is five times a day. First thing in the morning, mid-morning, after lunch, I don't do it before lunch, I don't want to ruin my lunch, mid-afternoon and 20 to 30 minutes before you wrap up for the day. And by doing that, you're giving yourself space to do good work. And if you, if you are one of those people who feel like you really, really have to answer every email the minute it comes in, um, I would challenge you to think again because it's, uh, there's studies out there that, that have shown this, but most people who email you don't expect an answer or wonder whether you get it for at least 48 hours. So if you are kind of triaging your work for an hour, that's not going to hurt you. I, I mean, you can try it. If you don't believe me, that's fine. But what you have just agreed to do is to be interrupted by every single email in case one of them's important. So let's just think about this. Let's take this another step. Five times a day, you're going to check your email. But I like to tell people that they should check it with the intention of managing it or sorting it rather than working it. And what I mean by this is go in, delete what you can, uh, fi you know, read and file away what you can, and then triage what is important or what requires your action, but maybe not immediate action, for when it's appropriate for you to work on it. And in our next video, we're going to be talking more about where to triage it, how to triage it, and how to make sure that you don't miss any of those emails. But the idea is to sort it. Think of this. If you get a lot of regular postal mail, you'll carry it into your kitchen maybe and put it on the counter and do the same thing with it. You're going to throw some of those items away. But you're not going to work them immediately. So let's apply this to our email management as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort it. So if it's a bill, you probably have a bill to pay file that you access once or twice a month. Um, something might be urgent. A note, note from the IRS would be urgent and you need to deal with it right away invitations. You don't have to respond right away if you don't want. Magazines, you're probably putting them in a pile to read later. So if you can shift your thinking to when you go in to your inbox and you're managing your email, you want to sort it rather than work it. And here's one of the third thoughts and that is be wary of being <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, it, it's kind of funny because you, you get drawn off by the need to check things off. And I do it too. I have to-do lists and I feel really good when I've checked things off. But if everything that I've checked off is unimportant, then I, and I haven't gotten to the main thing I needed to get to that day, I have just kind of fooled myself. So I call, I call them check off endomorphins. <laughs> and I'm not saying don't do it, but if you find yourself getting rid of the little stuff and working on getting rid of the little stuff all the time and not focusing on the big stuff, you might find yourself behind the eight ball. You might find yourself having to work late or work on weekends to catch up to do those important things that really need to be done. So. Beware of the easy checkoff. <laughs> I'm not saying don't do it because sometimes it feels pretty good. <laughs> All right, so let's think about another strategy. And that is, if you're getting a lot of email, suspect thyself. Just, just I'm sorry, just, uh, you don't have to report back to me, you don't have to say anything, but email begets email. The more email you send, the more email you're going to get. 
And I like to say to people, sometimes the best email is a phone call. Think about it. I mean, you get it off your desk by emailing, but then it goes to someone else or maybe four other people who all reply all. Then you get those copies back. And many times it goes into tentacles and off subject and all of a sudden you're having to pull the whole thing back where one little meeting or one phone call might have done the trick. I like to tell people, consider the overall time of the, react, of, of, of the transaction. And that is, if you can pick up the phone to call Pat to ask her to borrow her LCD projector on Tuesday, and she answers the phone and she says yes or no, both of you have just spent 30 seconds. Whereas, you're spending time writing the email, she's writing it back and forth, you may miss something, and is it going to be a total of 60 seconds? Probably not. So consider the overall time of the whole transaction when you're deciding whether to email or not. And that whole reply all thing, a lot of people do it, but if you want to be effective and efficient, stop replying all. I mean, you can give a gift to other people by doing that, by not replying all. Pick the four people who really need to see that memo. And I know we all kind of groan when we get the reply all, but let's not continue the process. I mean, we can be part of the solution here too. So I really, I think one of the most important points about all this is managing your email is about self-management. There are a lot of great tools out there and there are a lot of um, actually um, electronic tools that can help you unsubscribe from email lists and things like that. I'm not saying don't do them. The best tool is you and your self-discipline. And that's why I like to suggest, going back to what we said before, turn the dings off, check only five times a day or the, the longest interval you can stand, and don't be part of the problem, be part of the solution. Pick up the phone instead of sending emails and just see how all that works. We're going to have a lot more tips for you in our next two videos, but I do have one request, and that is the email that delivered this video has a spot for you to comment. And I want to keep this conversation going. You would not believe how many, how many responses I got to that, <laughs> that one question. And we're working on trying to get all those answers for you. And I hope that this has been helpful. So do not pass go. Go back to that quick email that delivered this video and join the conversation. That's all, that's all we're asking. I'm Marcia Egan and I'm very happy to be working with you and helping you reclaim at least an hour every day for the year and forever. Catch you again.